Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to do amazing color work to your photographs using gradient maps in Photoshop. <laughs> So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you three different things and we're going to do three different images. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use gradient maps to colorize your photos and make them look amazing. Then I'm going to show you how to use them in black and white photos to add a lot more cool coloring than you could get just using split toning and different things like that. And then I'm going to do a third tutorial where I'm going to show you how to create your own gradients from scratch. So I think you're going to enjoy this. And I've got three different images I'm using. By the way, I grabbed these images from Adobe Stock. A great thing about working with Adobe Stock is that you can search directly with the inside of Photoshop. Just go to the library panel, click on search, and you can search all the photos from Adobe Stock. And you can actually use any of them for free. You'll get a low resolution version of it with a watermark on it, but it's big enough for you to experiment with. And if you decide later on you want to use it, you can just license that image and it will be automatically updated with the full resolution version without the watermark. And I've got a link underneath where I give you 10 free images, so check that out. All right, let's have a look here at gradient maps. We're gonna start with this photograph, and what we're going to do is we're gonna use adjustment layers. So we're gonna go over to our layers panel here, and you see this little icon, we're gonna click on that, and this is where all our adjustment layers live. Now we're not gonna choose gradient. We're gonna go down to gradient map. And then gradient map is going to appear. The first thing you're going to see is your photo is going to look black and white. And that's because it's using the default gradient. And if you look at the default gradient, it goes from left to right, just like a histogram. So left is the shadows and the right side are the highlights. So if we look at this, black is mapped to blacks and whites are mapped to whites and the different grays in between. So we can change the way this works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and then when I click it's going to bring up the gradient editor. And let me just move it over to the side here to get it out of the way. And let's click on a blue here. Here's one where we've got blue to the left which are the shadows and then white to the right which are the highlights. Now there's a couple of things we need to do to make this work on a photograph. Uh, and one of them is to preserve our brightness and our shadow. We don't want to blow out our shadows or um, burn out our highlights. We want to keep those the same as they always are. But we also want to blend the colors in with the original colors. So let's have a look. The first thing I want to do to protect my shadows and highlight, I'm talking about the detail, not the color, is go to our, here, I'm just going to click OK to apply it. Let's go to our layers panel. Notice it says normal there. Normal is the blending mode. So what we do is if we go down, there's a blending mode here and it's called color. And if I click on color, notice what it does is it applies the new color, but it protects the luminosity or the brightness and darkness of the photos. If you want to know more about blending modes, check out my comprehensive blending modes tutorial. Also has a link to a free uh, layer blending modes ebook. Um, I was going to charge money for it. It's that kind of quality. It's not promotional, um, but you can download that for free. Just follow that link under underneath there. All right, so let's have a look at the second thing we want to do. We want to blend these new colors in with our existing colors. And the way to do that is to take this adjustment layer on top and we're going to change the opacity. So if we go here, we can click and we can see our opacity slider and we go all the way down. There's the original photo. And now I'm going to bring up just a little bit to apply a blend. We're at about quarter, which is about 28% right now or a third. And you can see now, if we turn this on and off, you can see the effect it's having. We immediately have a photograph that looks like it's been professionally color graded. And all we did is just apply the gradient map. Now I'm going to show you where to get more gradient maps right now. So if we go onto our gradient and we click here, we see our gradient map there. And of course, you know, if we click down here, we can see our different gradients are right there. Now we already looked at some of these and maybe this one could be kind of interesting, but there's a whole bunch more collections. If we click this little gear, you'll notice all these collections here come with Photoshop. So you can grab those already. They're all there. 
They're just not all loaded in at once because Adobe doesn't want to overwhelm you. So let's have a look at one of the collections. We're going to go down to the photographic toning. And we have two options. If we click OK, it's going to replace our gradients with this. Be aware, if you've created custom gradients, they'll get nuked out of here and you'll lose them like these ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Append. And Append, what that does is if I click this little uh, corner there, I can pull it down. It adds it to there. So to Append is to add to the collection and not replace anything. Replace will get rid of everything and only have the new ones in there. All right, so we've got a lot of different photographic toning ones here. And if we start to click on these, look at these. Some of these are just beautiful. And we can see that just by going through there, clicking one click, we can see exactly what's happening. So I kind of like that. That's really nice. It's a warmer one. We've got kind of cooler ones here. And you can see that, you know, there's some really nice warm ones there. And see, we've got a kind of a black in the shadow there. We've got a brown in the mids and just kind of a slight creamy color in the highlights. And I, I like this one here. I'm curious though, what's your favorite color combination? Drop a comment and let me know. I'd, I'd love to know what colors you like in your photos. So this is the first example. So let's have a look at this before and after. So there we go, before, and it's not bad, but here just gives it that little extra professional sparkle. All right, let's move on to our second example now, which is a black and white image. Have you ever struggled to do colorizing to a black and white image? Maybe you just add the, you know, just a tint, but this is going to do so much more than adding a tint to the photo. This is really going to give it some life and make it look professionally graded. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our blend, blending modes here. We're going to go down to our gradient map. That's going to apply it. Now, remember what we're going to do here. We don't really have to do luminosity or the color, sorry, but we can, uh, even though this is black and white, notice how it did kind of affect it a little bit. And I'm going to keep the opacity quite high on this this time, maybe like 50%. And we can change this later if we want to. Um, okay, so now let's click on some different gradient maps. We're just going to open it here and we can click on these and look at this beautiful color grading that we're getting on there. You know, we can go from these crazy ones and then we can go down here to more kind of designer looking ones. I kind of like that cyanotype kind of looking one. And if we go on here, we can drop our opacity all the way down and just bring it in a little bit. Or we can go very high. See that? Maybe a little much there. And we can bring it up to there. Okay, so you've got a good idea of how this works with the black and white pictures. Now let's do one more tutorial really quickly. This time I'm going to jump in and I'm going to show you how to create your own custom gradient map. Let's go here and we're going to grab our layer styles and we're going to grab the gradient map, the default one. Let's change our settings. Remember, we want color. And we'll drop this opacity down to 33. Nice. Okay, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to click here onto the gradient editor. And I'm just going to slide this over to the left so we can see what we're working on. And the gradient editor will open up. So this is the default gradient we are working with. Shadows, highlights, notice it goes black to white. Now, if we want to change a color, what we can do is we just click on the color stop. And maybe we want to kind of put a blue color into the shadows. Notice the color is now active. Click on it. And that will bring up a color picker. And we can grab, why don't we go for the teal kind of effect? So we'll go for the orange and teal look. So now we've added teal into the shadows. And let's go to the highlights. We're going to add an orange. So we're just going to click here. And notice we can change the color there. Before I do, though, I want to keep the extreme highlights pure white. So what I want to do is just copy this stop. Here's a little trick. If you hold the Alt or the Option key, you can click out a copy, and that will keep the same color as the original one that we clicked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click on the color now, and we're going to grab an orange. So we're going to go in there, apply that orange, and now you'll notice that it's in the highlights. Let's do the same thing for here, but we're going to just click to add another stop. We're going to change this to black. And what we're doing now is we're setting our extreme shadows to black and our extreme highlights to white. And we can see that in there. If we move this yellow over, notice how it affects different parts of the image. And we go over here. So the midtones now are becoming orange. So we can affect these different ranges by how far over we push this. And that's why we added the white. We could actually bring the white in and clip all these areas here to pure white. See that? So this gives you a lot of flexibility. 
So let's just pull our white back here and I'm gonna bring these down. I'm gonna leave the midtones alone. I'm gonna go for just kind of this area in the highlights. And you can also grab the stop here, which will change the way it blends between the two. So I'm gonna go here and just have a little bit of white. All right, so let's have a look here. Same thing we can do with our teals. Notice we can bring these down so we can affect more of the midtones, or we can go in here, pushing it to the left, it affects more of the shadows. Now here's a little trick. If I go in the middle here, and I choose something like a gray, what I'm doing now is I'm not gonna really affect the midtones so much, see that? And I can use this to kind of go across. And let's set that there for there. And I feel like that orange is a little too bright, so let's click on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the brightness of it. So just click on the top and drag across here. So we've got a little less of that orange. There we go, that's looking better. And now I'm just gonna click OK and we're just gonna take our opacity all the way down to zero. There's the original photograph and now we can just dial in a little bit of our look, bring it up to there and we can get this cool kind of a cinematic look. So if we look at that before and afterwards, it gives us a cool effect. So if you love Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now and that notification bell and then you'll be informed whenever I upload a new tutorial, which is at least once a week. Don't forget your 10 free images, link underneath from Adobe Stock. And if you're a photographer and you wanna sell your photographs, you can get them in front of millions of people and make some extra revenue. There's a link underneath of how to become a contributor to Adobe Stock. If you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.